seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have me, sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey everyone, this is Mike Taylor, aka Battleship Cobra, your friendly neighborhood SAP Business One consultant, and I'm here today to talk about year end closing. So, I get this question a lot um, how do you normally close your years? So, I'm going to say what generally you need to do in Business One, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to talk about the period and closing utility. If you like my videos, um, the best thing you can do for me is to share it with a consultant friend, send them the videos, send it to, you know, use it as a reference for somebody. Um, you know, if you send it to a friend and they subscribe, that's the best thing. I, you know, I want everybody to get these videos and to use them. If you want to go to supportme.battleshipcobra.com, I have some other things there, including an SAP Business One for Crystal Reports course. So check that out. Check that out. It will be very cool. So let's jump into a business one here. Oh, by the way, if anybody follows Joe Rogan, OG Death Squad t-shirt, Joe Rogan experience. I'm a huge Joe Rogan fan. If you listen to podcasts or you've never heard anything about the Joe Rogan experience podcast, go check it out. Um, it's awesome. It's changed my life. It's uh, such a cool podcast. You get the long form conversations with a lot of really interesting people. Joe has a really balanced perspective. You know, you think, oh, he's a UFC commentator. He's just a meathead, but that's not true. So check it out. I'm, I really like to share that with people. Okay, so what are the things that people want to do? They want, uh, so people will like, you know, you'll, you'll have your stuff to do your financial uh, things for the bank or other stakeholders. Um, but from a system standpoint, what you need, what most people want is a balance sheet, a PL, they want accounts receivable, matching the balance sheet, accounts payable, matching the balance sheet, and inventory matching the balance sheet. Then they're going to close the year financially and then we're gonna lock up the year. And then there's bank recs usually in there too and obviously adjustments and stuff. I'm not gonna do that, but you should be familiar with how to do that. Okay, so number one, financials, financial reports, financial, uh, p &L, very simple. Make sure this is run by posting date, not any of these other dates. Posting date, uh, 0101 2016. In this case, we're going to close 2016. Run it like that. Boom. You can use um, financial chart of account templates here. I I won't go into that now, but you can customize the sorting of your P, uh, of your chart of accounts to use a different kind of format other than what you have using here. So you can have a special PNL layout, say for the bank or something. So you can find that in uh, financial report templates, but I'm not going to do that right now. So basically, run this. This is a very uh, simple one. Uh, sometimes people do exchange rate. Um, revaluation so use exchange rate differences I'm not going to do that in this one though um, exchange rate differences effectively it uh, realizes the gain and loss and brings everything into alignment at the year end so you set the exchange rate on say December 31st 2016 and then you run this for December 20 uh, December 31st 2016 and it'll it'll just align it based on that um, exchange rate so do that too if you want. Balance sheets, we're gonna write a balance sheet based on posting date, 12, 31, 2016. And you can, you can use these things. These are the basic ones that I normally do. Run it. Okay, so now we want to do accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, CAD. I have another, rep I have another video on um, how to do the, the receivable report. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I'll link that in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so that's there. So we want to go financials, financial reports, accounting, aging, customer receivables, aging. Clear these options here. Do it as of December 31st, 2016. And you have to check these boxes. Again, I have a video that will explain this more in detail. Just check the boxes, trust me. Ding, 337419, 337419. So this is every... This is every open invoice at the, that date uh, for what they're owed to match it. Accounts payable is exactly the same. You just run to vendor liabilities there. The inventory report is inventory, inventory reports, 
inventory audit reports and guys if you think I'm going too fast you just rewind the video and watch it I people I don't I don't know if people want me to speak faster or slower you can watch it a million times it's free so I'm gonna keep speaking fast because generally people like shorter videos and uh, jump around and jump jump cut jump cut and now I'm back you know nobody has any uh, people need the information as fast as they can get it so I'm gonna talk as fast as I can posting date don't run it by system date this will mess you up because this ignores whatever posting date you've set so if you've done backdated adjustments this system date posts it or uh, pulls the information based on the date it was created not the date that it was posted this needs to be posting date some systems are gonna have this defaulted to system date so just be careful about that but the date I usually leave from blank and then you can do two <clears throat> you can you know you can put Put that clear this out GL account you want to make sure that so in this case our inventory of finished goods is the only one that we have in there uh, where are we at here inventory of finished goods all the inventory all the warehouses by item and you need to check display OB for items accounts with no transactions so run that and skim over here four two nine seven two five zero ninety so this matches perfectly so what do you do if this doesn't match perfectly? Well, I have a system, like basically it's gonna be journal entries that are probably screwing you up. Maybe you did manual journal entries and you'll notice if you look in here, you're gonna find now under the finished goods that you can block manual posting because if you wanna treat this like it's a control account, you cannot do manual journal entries on it you have to do your adjustments through inventory revaluations, through goods issues, goods transfers, and, and through the system in order to control what the system sees and also what's on your balance sheet. Because if you just change the balance of the balance sheet, um, how is the system supposed to know? Certain industries want to do wholesale revaluations and they revalue it on paper or they do different things for consumables and things. But in most cases, if you want to be able to um, you know, most people most people do want to be able to explain their balance sheet in terms of the costs and the items that are actually in there on a specific date. So don't do manual journal entries. If you want me to explain my process for fixing these two balances, comment down below, and uh, I'll do that. Actually, that, that's probably going to be one coming up. But just like this video and comment below and and tell me any other ideas you want for. Uh, videos I generally will do them if I've you know I've talked to a lot of users and if there's any value then I'll generally do it so uh, just let me know down below I really appreciate the feedback too or anything you have to say okay so we did that boom boom match that so that's another thing we've done the P&L we've done the balance sheet we matched that to the accounts receivable we've done the inventory Okay, so now what you're going to do is the, uh, per the period end closing utility. So we're going to go financial, oh, we're going to go admin, utilities, period end closing. So this will basically just close your period financially. So you go the year 2016, you go 21, 2012, and then you go retained earnings, will be retained earnings, period end closing should be a, generally it's going to be a different account. So it'll do all the net of all the P&L accounts at the end of the period in this account and then it's going to forward one value to the next period in retained earnings. So you need to unlock all those periods. Run this. This is a very small list but you can go through here, approve them all, put notes if you want for period closing. This will do your closing for you when you click execute. If you're working on this you can click save, come back and see it again. Don't worry, you can re-close if you want. So you can do this, uh, you know, soft close it, send it to your accountants, they'll give you adjustments. Do your adjusting entries as of 1231, do your inventory counts, do whatever. Um, do whatever write-offs you need and all those adjustments and then just redo the period end closing. It's not gonna like, close it and lock it um, so you're stuck or anything, so don't worry about that. So the last thing you want to do is administration, system initialization, posting period. So you need to go through here, and my recommendation is to lock the 2016 period, obviously, once you're done. 
So you go through here and you set your period status to locked. So Mike, what are these four different period statuses? Unlocked means anybody can do anything unlocked except sales. Means sales are preventing from putting like backdating invoices. Closing period is only particular users there's an authorization to allow them to work in the closing period periods, but no other users can use it. So it's kind of like allowing it to be kind of pseudo open, but not fully open for all users. And then locked is done, locked for everybody. You can go back and unlock it, but um, this is kind of like saying done, right? And just check my notes, that looks like everything. Okay, we switch back to me here. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, any questions, post them down below. That should be your basic year-end closing process. If you love me, go to support supportme.battleshipcobra.com. Share this with a friend, post it down below, like my videos, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.